Hey everyone, hey, got an email the other day from a Veterinary Insider member, and they asked, we live in a wooded suburban area and there's a lot of wild animals that come into our yard. Are there any diseases we need to worry about? We know this is a common question, and the answer is yes, there are several diseases you need to know about. By far the most common zoonotic disease associated with wildlife are bite wounds and the bacterial infections and tissue damage that result from such bites. Now, it's common sense to say that it's best not to attempt to handle wildlife that may wander into your yard or environment. And if you do get bitten, not only do you have to worry about that infection, but you also have the additional worry of exposure to rabies, especially if the animal that bit you can't be located. Now, speaking of rabies, wildlife species it's most commonly seen in are raccoons, bats, foxes, and skunks. You know, it's occasionally seen in squirrels and possums, but this is pretty rare. Another zoonotic disease that's often overlooked is called visceral larval migraines, which is caused by human exposure to roundworms found in animals, especially those found in raccoon droppings. The raccoon roundworm is a nasty creature. It can cause serious and sometimes even life-threatening illness in people. Now, speaking of nasty, certain tapeworms found in wildlife can also cause serious illness. Rodents can carry some tapeworms which can be transmitted to dogs and cats that are allowed to hunt those rodents and eat them. Owners, in turn, can be exposed through their infected pets. Now, if you allow your pet, particularly your cat, to hunt mice and rats and other rodents, it's not a bad idea to have them dewormed annually for tapeworms. Wildlife can also contaminate your environment with fleas and ticks. Ticks can carry diseases such as Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain, Spotted Fever, and Ehrlichia, all of which can infect people. Now, fleas, of course, are, are a common nuisance. And believe it or not, bubonic plague, which is transmitted through the flea, still occurs sporadically in the southwestern United States. Reservoirs include rodents, such as chipmunks and prairie dogs, and also wild rabbits can harbor the fleas that carry this disease. Each year, a number of outdoor cats are diagnosed with bubonic plague due to their interaction with these wildlife species. Typhus is another disease that can be spread by fleas and also by lice. It's found in the Gulf Coast region of the United States, where fleas found on possums have been isolated with this organism. Birds, bats, and rodents can transmit a number of serious fungal diseases to people through their droppings. This is seen mo most often where the droppings are concentrated and allowed to dry out as this increases the potential for the infected fungal spores to become aerosolized and breathed in by humans. Finally, turtles, lizards, and frogs can all transmit the bacteria Salmonella, which, as you've probably seen in the news recently, can cause serious gastrointestinal illness in people. There's no need to freak out about zoonotic diseases, but there are several measures you need to take to protect you and your family. First of all, don't interact with wild animals that may wander onto your property. To do so is just asking for trouble. Secondly, be sure to control the fleas and ticks, not only on your pets, but in your environment as well. And thirdly, keep porches and patios and driveways, walkways, and sandboxes free and clean from animal and bird droppings. Well, that's it for this week. I hope I didn't disgust you too much with this topic, but it's an important one. So until next time, don't forget to hug your pet for me. We'll see you.